Okay, I'm blending in these feet with the chest. And now I've gotten rid of that hard edge. Now I can use a really low opacity. And just with my tablet, which is pressure sensitive, I just kind of touch it a few times. And you'll see those textures kind of change, right? And you choose which you want to keep. Do I want that feather to come over the top, for instance? Now, the thing that helps with that, I've got kind of the nice warmth of the back here. I can just play quickly with direct adjustments on those feet. So maybe I want to brighten them just a little bit. Maybe I want to deaden their highlights, though. And then color balance always makes a little bit of a difference. I'm going to add some warmth to it, just like I did to the wings. But there's so much yellow in those talons, I might kind of work against that in the highlights. Something like that. The other thing I can do, I just did color balance, is I can go to hue saturation, and of course I can move everything, you know, this way or that way, but I don't like what it's doing to these talons, so what I can also do is I can just select yellow, and then I can shift the hues of the yellow to be a little bit more golden. And I can even desaturate them a bit, which I like. There's also all these blues. And I can take some of that saturation out. So you can treat the colors differently on hue saturation as well. You can even darken all of them, which will help blend that tail in. Maybe I don't want to darken it all the way, though. Let's see. So first, I'm going to take the yellows, make a little bit more golden. Then I'm going to take the blues, make them darker. Not all the way darker. Maybe shift them a little bit towards the greens. All right, save my work. And so now I just need to finish cutting this out. And there's this kind of blue ridge around the feathers, so I can use the magic wand with contiguous, select the outside. And then I can even do selected mask. And this time, instead of just a 1.4 pixel feather, I'm going to do like a 5 pixel feather. I'm going to do pretty aggressive, but I'm going to use it in an interesting way. So now, instead of hitting delete, which would do this, right? Actually, that doesn't hurt too bad. But I'm going to use my eraser directly at 100%. And then I'm going to use the selection I just did as a mask. So I don't have to delete everywhere. I can just delete from these selections. I can do the same thing with the magic wand and the blues. And I can even say these blues, I don't need to make them contiguous. I can just make them everywhere in the image. Right? And then I can select and mask. It remembers my settings. And then I can use that. Well, they're too small, but I can use that with my eraser as a stencil. And actually, it is selecting these things, even though it doesn't look like it has them selected. They're in the feather. So this way, it will only erase those blues with a feather around them. 
but I don't want to erase in here, for instance, or I lose some of my my feather content. All right. So now let's uh, cut this out. Or maybe just use my eraser. Hit Command V to deselect. And then decide how much shows this hard edge. How much of this feather shows. And there's this big twig here. I'm going to show you how we can get rid of that. But let's just clean up the rest of the edges. My lasso with my one pixel feather. Find that edge. Delete it out. And then on the wing, there's some debris hanging out here. Get rid of that. Okay, good. So there's some lighting issues, you know, especially going into the tail that I can work with, but it's looking pretty good so far. Now I got to do those same things with the head. So let me merge all of that body together that I've been working on. And I do that by holding down shift and selecting all those layers. Oops. I can also use my move tool and just click on them while holding down shift. And it should get all of these layers selected. You can see them kind of lighting up with gray. And then I click on that folder icon. And I can move whatever's missing this one into it. Move that up outside of the tail group, or I can just call this the body. So now I've got the body all in one layer, which allows me to transform it together, to move it together, to do whatever I might need. For instance, if I just want to distort it, just change its perspective a little bit to be a little bit more dynamic. to kind of fit with my, the anatomy of my sketch, I can do that. And it will still keep them as separate layers. And then if I need to, I can go in individually Let's see, for instance, here, and I might do something like warp it just to take the edge out of that spine. And all the transitions, the kind of soft transitions will work. And I can go to the wing and I can kind of move that in to work. All right. Now the head. So often I spend a lot of time at the beginning on the head. And I'm not doing that this time. So I tend to do too much <laughs> that relates to the head. But I will start with direct adjustments before I start cleaning it up. I'm going to brighten up that jaw. Then I'm going to add some warmth and color balance. Looks nice and full, fully dimensional with its color. Cool shadows, warmer highlights. 
play against all that green. Now I'm going to go in with my lasso. And find that edge that I want to keep with my one pixel feather using my tablet. I love the polka dotted scales. Just do it as a big chunk like that. And then delete it out. And what's nice is I can move that selection down through other layers. So I have perfect overlap. Okay. And then I can use my 100% eraser. Get rid of these hard edges. Already done a little bit of that. So I can start blending it with what's behind. Like that eye. And then I can play with the adjustments. I, think I want that eye to be a little bit bigger. going to stretch it out, play with its shape a little. It's very dinosaurish, but I wanted it kind of as a cute eye. If I wanted to, I could even, let's see, let's try this. Select it all and just internally composite it, Command J. And just make it a lot bigger. And then I'd want to really kind of tighten it up with its levels. So really, really is crisp. And this is a good instance where I might use a little bit of the sharpen tool, which I don't get to use too much, but just to, there are really defined edges here. So this will help increase the contrast around those defined edges. Which when you have to upsample something, this can make it work for you. And then if I want to play with just the hue of that, that eyeball, let's see, I can really saturate it. And then erase away because it's on its own copied layer. blend it in with its background. And once you've gotten rid of those hard edges, then you can blend with lower opacity. Alright, next, what's underneath it? That eye. Here, let's tilt it a tiny bit more. sharpen it a little too much, and then go in with my sponge and desaturate it at the edges. So I got a little too much color in some places. And now I can work behind it. Play with levels. Play with color balance. Some of those pinks in there. And then good old blending by first taking out the hard edges, 